Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 Lord we give you praise chapter 4 verse 13 I want to teach on what I entitled let the oil flow chapter 4 the verse 13 give us a better background I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now the word Christ there refers to the anointed and his anointing. The word Christ in this context refers to the anointed and his anointing. So then the anointed and his anointing. So it means then we can read it now with that understanding that I can do all things through oh, the anointed one and his anointing ye who strengthens me. Does it make sense now? So if I was writing my version of Bible then that's how it would look. The word Christ in that context refers to the anointed and his anointing. So what is anointing? The word anointing, I told you last time, is basically to smear, to apply with oil. Are we together? But now, Jesus is the one that is anointed who walks with his anointing. Oh, tell somebody, let the oil flow. Tell somebody, let the oil flow. Oh, tell somebody better, let the oil flow. So when we talk about the anointed and his anointing, we're talking about Jesus. Now, with that kind of understanding, there is nothing that you cannot do. He said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through the anointed and his anointing which he uses to strengthen me. Does it make sense now? So there we go. Chapter 105 verse 15 of Psalms but now the message version. MSG. 105 verse 15 of Psalms. The message version. I want to show you something. Your life will not remain the same. I, I say your life will not remain the same. Amen. How I say your life will not remain the same. Amen. He say, Don't you dare lay a hand on my anointing. Now, I want, I made you understand last time that when we talk about the anointed, we are referring to everybody who is born again. That part A is referring to any believer born again child of God and that's why I will anoint everybody even before we anoint our pastors and consecrate them into the office of the pastoral everybody in this church is anointed I thought somebody would shout amen, amen. As I thought somebody would shout amen. amen everybody under the sound of my voice those who are watching on Facebook those who are physically here you are anointed amen. so don't. part one say do not dare touch your neighbor tell them don't dare no, no, no. If your neighbor is not talking to you, that neighbor, you doubt that neighbor. Touch a neighbor, tell them, Don't dare. Don't dare. Is the Bible saying that? Don't you dare. Lay a hand on who? On my anointed. Now everybody here is anointed. May the Lord put that mark on your head. That nobody will dare touch your life in the name of Jesus. Now part B is for the anointed men of God now. Now it says, don't hurt a hair on the head of my prophet. A hair. Some of you here, you want to crush the head. The Bible is saying, don't touch a hair. Some of us, you want to crush the head, the entire head. Do not hurt a hair on the heads of my prophets. Not the head. Eh? 
So how much danger as if you give him a slap on the face? Kappa. Are you following what I'm saying here? Read it again one more time. Don't Do not dare. Uh -huh. Don't you dare lay a hand on my anointed. Hey. And don't hurt a hair of the head of my prophets. Now what anointing will do for you? Write it down. When you are anointed, anointing will make you different. When the oil comes on your head, anointing makes you peculiar. When oil comes upon your head, the oil will make you an enigma. When the anointing comes upon your head, the anointing will make you unique. When the anointing comes upon your head, the anointing will make you a separate person. A kind of a person that cannot be explained by words. There is a dimension of uniqueness that comes into your life. How oh, I pray. May God separate you with everybody in your family in the name of Jesus. Now what separation will do, it will make you not to go through what others go through. Why separation? So that if others have gone through a particular issue, you don't go through the same. Because you are separate. You are different. You are unique. You have a kind of a, of a personality that nobody else has. When anointing comes upon you, if you touch money, you touch a money nobody in your family has ever touched. I, I thought I'm talking to somebody here. If you have to marry, the kind of marriage and wedding you are going to have, nobody has had it in your family before. Are you following what I'm saying here? The Lord is putting in my spirit that I will release grace for company owners. That's what I'm hearing here. People will have companies and have employees. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, but this is what I'm hearing. The Lord is saying, as we release our grace, can I prophesy? As we celebrate our fifth anniversary, with my eye open, I prophesy. Let the grace to all companies come upon you. And be an employer that will have more than 10, 20, 30 employees. I decree and declare in the name of Yeshua the Messiah. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. Now sit down. When the anointing comes upon you, It makes you unique. That I said. Number two on the same. When anointing comes, it declares protection upon you. Anointing will take for you a comprehensive insurance cover by the blood of Jesus. So that you are protected when you are going out. You are protected when you are coming in. You are protected when you sit down. You are protected when you are up. You are protected when you are walking. You are protected when you are sleeping. You are protected in the town. You are protected in the city. You are protected in the village. You are protected in a bus. You are protected in your house. Everything about you is protected. Verse 14 says, The Lord ordered the kings, verse 14 of the same, never to dare touch. He permitted no one to abuse them. Hey! He told kings to keep their hands off. He told the kings, keep your hands off those people. They carry oil. After this service, everybody on the sound of my voice, they shall keep their witchcraft off your life. I said they shall keep their wickedness off your family. They shall keep off your name. They will not gossip you anymore. He permitted no one. After this service, nobody is permitted to affect your life. I said nobody is permitted in the name of Jesus. So anointing will take a cover for you. There will be a statement of protection upon your children, upon your life, upon your career. So out here. Chapter 1, chapter 2, verse 20 of the first letter of John. Chapter 2, verse 20 of the first letter of John. Second, first John, first John, chapter 2. The verse is 20. Letter of John. Write it and put your eyes on the screen. First John, not the St. John Gospel. But you be. 
Yes, you're there. But you belong. Uh -huh. The only one anointed you and you all know it. Give me amplified version. But you have, but been, you have been anointed. Uh -huh. You hold a sacred appointment from but you have been anointed by. Uh -huh. You hold a sacred anoint, anointment from. You have been given an unction from. The Holy One. The Holy One and you all know the, the truth. truth. Or you know all things. Now what anointing does, anointing gives you divine understanding. The way you understand is in a unique way. There are things nobody will sit you down to teach you. The anointing that you receive begin to teach you some things that nobody, even your father, that have never, have never encountered. They don't teach them in school. They don't teach them anywhere. The anointing. So anointing gives you that action to function in your area of appointment. Did you see what the Bible say? The anointing gives you action to function in your area of what? Appointment. And that's why sometimes there are things you will do. That even you yourself, you ask yourself, am I the one who did it? There's that unique grace that is released that comes upon you to enable you to do what naturally, if you are pushed to do, you couldn't do. You handle a case or a situation or an issue that naturally even you, you know you couldn't handle. Are you following what I'm saying? You buy a kind of a car, even you yourself, you know you can't buy. A kind of a house you build or buy is a house that naturally even you, you know you couldn't buy. Then later you look at yourself, you look at what you have achieved, you say, no, this is not me. It's that action that came. That action will rest upon you in the name of Jesus. I say to rest upon you in the name of Jesus. Do we still have wedding show? We still have it. For those who are not married, you are the one who go there. You know, there's a dimension of wedding you do. You don't take it there, they look for you. Ah. Am I talking to somebody here? Receive it in Jesus' name. Are you, are you anyone else here? There's a dimension of wedding you do. That you don't need to tell them, come, go into another. No, they will look for you. They say, ah, there's one dimension we had. And this is a kind that we need. A quality that we need. The standard that we need. Everything that we need is inside. Shout, I receive it. Are you following what I'm saying here? Action to do what normally you can't do. This year when it began, I gave houses. Did I do that? Yes. Can I tell you something? By the time we celebrate end year Thanksgiving, people will be having houses in this church. There is an anointing to receive it. How I receive it? I release anointing to own houses right now in the name of Jesus. Anointing to own cars and better ones in the name of Jesus. Anointing for marriage and good marriages in the name of Jesus. Shout I receive it. Next thing that you need to understand. When you are anointed, your anointing cannot be taken away from you. Once you are anointed, it is permanent. Write it down. Once you receive an anointing, your anointing is permanent. Romans 11 29. 11 29 of Romans. <laughs> Write it down and look at the screen. Some time back, I used to preach in one of my former churches. And one of my leaders and my pastors and my elders in that church, after I preached, he used to call me. And he said, Your exposition was not correct. Your theology was not. Follow me here. Your theology was questionable. Your interpretation of the scriptures was not correct. So the man keep correcting me anytime I preach when I finish. And he will not tell me behind people. He will tell me before everybody like this. You see like now you stand here, you preach. I'm seated there. What I usually do, I write notes you are preaching. And I also write notes of your mistakes and your good things. I usually have two pages. Are you following what I say? But I don't rebuke in the public. I'll call you later. I tell you, adias, adias, adias. I know you are believing. That man did not wait for me to finish. When we finish preaching like this, he says, sir, you have done well. But your exposition was not good. Your interpretation of scriptures was not correct. Your doctrine is not good. 
Now I thought at that time that it was killing my spirit. Little did I know that was challenging me, rebuking me public to make me better. As I'm talking now, the same man that used to rebuke me is calling me Papa. Are you following what I'm saying here? When the anointing is in your life, you can make mistakes. But there are mistakes that bat the real thing out of you. Are you following what I'm saying here? And sometimes you can be rebuked. And when you rebuke, take it correctly. Are you following? I am very slow, by the way, in rebuking. That's my weakness. I can take forever. But the day by mistake, I rebuke you, my daughter. <laughs> you will be corrected by, by rebuke. Are you following? I can be very slow, but the day I get anxious, I, I do it like that, my mentor, before people. Anointing gives you what? That anxious to function in your area of divine appointment. Whether you're a singer or a church member, can I tell you something? Everybody needs the anxious. Anxious is the fuel that runs that, that vehicle of your destiny. Now the Bible says for God's gifts and his call are irrevocable. Irrevocable. Touch your neighbor. Tell them that they are irrevocable. If your neighbor is not touching you, they don't want good for you. Touch them and tell them they are irrevocable. The word irrevocable means undisputable. Means not reversible. Means they cannot be collected back. Means cannot be taken away. Once it has been given, it is permanent. Even God cannot take it. Somebody asked me, sir, we have had that there are pastors in this town or in this country that they did this, they did that. We thought God should have left them. They are still pastors. After everything we have, they did. The spirit of God can separate and leave you because when you are not holy, it doesn't stay there. But the gift of prophecy will still remain there. The man can prophesy not holy. I don't know how far I should go with this. The danger is the day of judgment. And that's when they will say we used to prophesy in your name. And you say I don't know you. Did you get what I'm saying here? But the fact that they mess doesn't stop them to do deliverance. If people come they will do like this. Fear. People will be falling down. You say but we heard that he was drinking. There's nothing to do with, the, with anointing with his drinking. Permanent. That's why you see some pastors are smoking, drinking but they are still anointed. Because it's irrevocable. The danger is on the judgment day. Are you following what I'm saying here? And that's why even you as a member, you know where you came from this weekend, this Easter. Eh? Shout fire. fire. Shout fire. fire. Eh, I said shout fire. fire. But you are still here. The spirit of God did not kill you. Eh? I'm here. My eye cannot open to prophesy your case. Not because you are very holy, but it, there is a gift on you that is irrevocable. But if you don't repent, the judgment is waiting. That's the risk now. And somebody can be a dangerous singer when they sing angels come down. But see their life, you say, God. Ha! Huh? The way they sing, the way they behave, they don't relate at all. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? The choir, are you hearing what I'm saying here? And you ask him, me who is even holier than her. Why is it that I cannot sing like her? No, 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 no. It has nothing to do with holiness. Revo irrevocable. It's without repentance. God cannot take it back. The only risk, like I said, is that now at the end of the day, when judgment is done, you I used to sing in your name when I was singing, people are being blessed. I don't know you go this side. I used to do deliverance in your name when I deliver people. They say, I don't know you go this side. I used to do, no, 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 no. But they are irrevocable. Now read it well. Take it again. For God's gift and his call are irrevocable. Uh -huh. He, he never, never withdraws, withdraws them. them when once they are given. Uh -huh. And he does not change his mind about me. He doesn't change his mind about those who whom he give his grace to whom a sense is called. Amen. So once God calls you, it remains permanent. You can even backslide if you like. Go and drink. But you are drinking with a call on your head. And that's why people will never forget saying this man used to be a pastor. Musa why is he to come here? Mutu moja mbali kwa mepa kwa mafuta watu walikuwa na mheshimiwa alienda ka backside. Kila mali akipita tunasikia watu wakisema this person used to be what? The reason they say because they still see anointing on his head but it's messing up. 
So anointing will not be taken till the judgment day. The danger is the judgment day now. Anointing cannot defend him. And that's why sometimes even if you see you go and mess around, you come to church, God will not kill you. It doesn't mean you are better. It's only that God cannot do nothing about it. He has given you some grace. He can't take it away. So it's you to shape up. Because you're going to work for nothing. Sapphire. Sapphire. Touch your neighbor. Ask them, are you here? Ask them, did you hear what the pastor said? Shout better now, fire. So no one can take your anointing. It's permanent. Hallelujah. In 2nd Kings chapter 13, we see Elisha dying. Amen. And Elisha is dead, buried and forgotten. And the Bible says that young, some men were carrying a dead body to go and bury. And mistakenly, they carried him across the head of the grave of Elisha. Now, Elisha is dead, but the anointing that was upon Elisha is still alive even in the grave. And the anointing that was in him brought a dead man alive. The man is dead. is resurrecting the dead man. Ha! Huh. Are you following what I'm saying here? So it means even if you go to the grave, the anointing is still where? Upon your life. And that's why when they were burying TB Joshua, people said there were deliverances happening even in his burial ceremony. And people were saying, oh, it's a cult. Oh, that one is not God. Which God? The one for Elisha, was it not God? The one for TB Joshua, he had not died. He was still alive. The one for Elisha is even buried. And his bones still bring the dead. Elisha is dead, I'm alive. My anointing will bring back what died in your life in the name of Jesus. I said Elisha is dead, I'm here. You are, my anointing will bring back whatever was lost in the name of Jesus. Are you following what I say? So once anointing is given, anointing does go. Doesn't go at all. Job was tempted. He went through everything. But his anointing was intact. Why is it happening that way? Because the anointing, anointing usually remains so that whatever you lost can now be brought back by the same anointing that remained. And that's why Job lost children, lost everything, but the anointing that was in him now could bring back children, bring back wealth, but now in double portion, double portion. I following what I'm saying here. So don't fear when people leave you. Don't fear when people leave you. Be, be careful if your anointing is being taken away. Because when people leave, your anointing will bring better people. I thought I'm in church. I just thought I'm in church. I said when people leave, your anointing will bring better ones. May that be your testimony. Ezekiel 37 verse 7. Let me show you something. 37 verse 7. Of Ezekiel. Sometimes you realize when a prophecy has been given, after the prophetic word, a lot of battles begin to come into your life. They told you you're going to get a job. That's the time even those that used to call you to help you get a job, they're not calling you again. They told you there's a promotion coming. The time they told you about promotion, that's when they are threatening to demote you. Have you been there before? You have been told this year is your year of breakthrough. See the way you start that year, you start with all the hardship on this world. Until you look at the prophet, you look at the prophecy, you say, sir. Stay without, bring it back. Are you following what I say? You look at the prophecy, you look at the prophet, you look at yourself, you say, this man was motivating me. Because of what you are going through. Chapter 37 verse 7, the Bible says, So I prophesied, as I was commanded. As I was commanded as a prophet of God. And as I prophesied. And as I was prophesying. There was a thundering noise and behold. A shaking and trembling and a rattling. And the bones came together. Born to its bone. When prophecy is given. There must be a movement. There must be a shake up. There must be something. The thundering. The shaking. The trembling. And when that happens. It is a sign that what was prophesied is true. Because once it is prophesied, it will be confirmed by another prophetic word. 
And I will give you an example. Give me verse 8 now. Let me see you. Let me show you. And I prophesied again. And I looked and behold. Uh -huh. There were sinews upon the bones. Uh -huh. And flesh came upon them. Uh -huh. And skin covered them over. Uh -huh. But there was no breath or spirit in them. Verse 7. Let's go back now. So it doesn't mean that the fact that there are battles after the anointing has come upon you. Doesn't mean that anointing did not work. Every time we anoint people. You hear somebody say, Pastor, every time we have anointing service. Eh? The way I will have battles that week. Eh? I don't I don't know whether I should attend anointing service or I should not. Because every time I have anointing service, after that service, the way I have battles is not sickness, is not finance, is not my is not this, it is attacks. Thundering noise and behold, shaking, trembling, rattling. Everything is happening. Hell is broken loose. But it's usually a sign that there's something coming to happen. It, this usually happens to discourage your spirit, man. So you say, no, even, have you been fasting and after the fasting and prayer, what you are fasting exactly about, when you finish fasting, is even going worse. The same issue you are fasting about, when you finish like that, it is even worsening. Satan tries to magnify it. When you receive anointing, to discourage, you say, ah, this anointing of a thing doesn't work. Let me show you something. This is oil. Let me explain something. This oil, olive oil, is not anointing. But it's a symbol of an anointing. Now this side did not hear me. Can I say that again? This is not anointing. But it is a symbol of an anointing. So we, we did not make it. It was made somewhere. When we buy it and bless it, we believe that it turns into a, an element that can be used as a representation, don't worry, of an anointing. Are you following what I say? The same way we buy elements and bless in the name of the Lord and believe that they turn into the body and into the blood and we partake as communion. Are we together? The same way we use oil as a symbol of anointing and bless it and it works as an anointing. Does it make sense? So somebody told me, I don't believe in anointing. So if you don't believe in anointing, don't believe in communion also. Because I don't make these things. We buy them from a shop. Yeah, so if you don't believe in anointing, don't believe also in what? Don't take Holy Communion. Because you have Christians who believe in Holy Communion, but they don't believe in anointing. Is that true? It's okay. When they hear about anointing, they say, anointing. You pass away, you're going to have a foot, you're going to have a foot. 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 Let me tell you, hata kama ni uji muna pika, ina pika na muna muke kama wewe. Hata kama ni chai ama ni, ni strungi ama ni kuakola. Yuko kuakola ni wana tengene zanga. Unajua mwenye nafanya kuakola kama meokoka ama jaokoka. Eti tunatumianga black current. Si tunatumianga raibina. E, iyo raibina ni wana tengene zanga. Na hata kama ni strong tea. Iyo strong tea na kuanga damu ya yesu. Lakini baada ya maombi kwa imani. Tunamini na kuwa damu ya. Does it make sense? The same way, the anointing oil is not anointing, but we believe is a symbol of anointing. It's a dove, is a sign of the Holy Spirit. Does it does that does, does one make all doves Holy Spirit? So don't don't give me those nonsense. Let me anointing. Because that is video to Tengenezi. Like any bad, I'm a homie, quite money. To na mini kwamba yale ma mikate, yana kwa mwili wa crystal, na ile yo wine, ama yo whatever, in a kwa dam. Then you to na mini evil, you to na mini mamma anointing pier. Are you following what I'm saying here? Are you following what I'm saying here? Salt fire. So whenever anointing has been done, you are anointed. The devil usually come to attack. But you will come out. I just said you will come out. Give me chapter 30 of Exodus. Verse 28. Let me show you something. And by the way, the fact that after the anointing you go through battles doesn't mean God lied. 
The fact that after the prophecy they were battled doesn't mean God lied. The truth is, God said the truth, but Satan is retaliating. 22 verse 29 of Exodus. He said, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he a son of man that he should speak a word and repent. Are you following what I'm saying now? No, take us back. Leave Exodus. Or oh, 30 verse 30. No, don't, don't, don't read 22. Give me 30 verse 28. Yes? A message version. Message, please. Message version. Message version. 30, 28. Message version. Uh -huh. The altar of whole burnt offerings and, and all, all the utensils, the utensils uh -huh. and the wash basin and its base. Next verse. Consecrate them so they'll be, uh, they'll be soaked in holiness. They'll be soaked in holiness. holiness. So that anyone who so much as touches them will become holy. So that any band that touches them will become holy. And that's why sometimes I come to church here, I open my, I take anointing, I anoint everything. I anoint my bed, I anoint my seats, I anoint my utensils. The Bible says you can anoint even the speakers. And once it is anointed, it becomes what? Holy. So that anybody that was unholy, when they touch it, they are purified. So anything can be anointed. That's what I'm trying to say. A human being can be anointed, an animal can be anointed. A car can be anointed, a house can be anointed. Verse 30, verse 30 now. Anything can be anointed. Even your documents. Then anoint Aaron and his sons. Now anoint Aaron and his sons. Consecrate them as priests to me. And that's why I will anoint these my pastors. To consecrate them to the Lord. Are you following what I say? Because what you are going to do is not ordination, it's consecration. The day God told me this person is, I've qualified this person to be a pastor. That day God ordained the person. Now what I'm doing is to consecrate, to make what was done by God to be authentic. To be what? Because it's useless until this that I will do today is done. Give me verse 22 of the same now. Verse 22 of the same Exodus. Verse 22. From now New King James. Verse 22, but now New King James Version. And God spoke to Moses. Uh, moreover, the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Say, Next verse. Uh -huh. Also take for yourself quality spices, mm -hmm. 500 shekels of liquid mild. Uh -huh. hey, hey, wait, 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 pole, pole. Also take for yourself. Now this is how for the first time anointing oil was made. This issue of anointing oil, the first time God himself gave instruction on how anointing oil should be prepared. And this is how it was prepared. Now follow together. Also take with you quality spices, 500 shekels of liquid mild. How many shekels? 500. How many shekels? 500 shekels. 500 shekels. Write it somewhere. 500. Uh -huh. Of? Half as much. 500 shekels of what? Of mild. Of mild. And half as much. Mm -hmm. Sweet smelling cinnamon. Now half of sweet smelling. Now mild is, um, is something very bitter. It's very bitter. Are you following? And now, the Lord is giving Moses instruction to take how many percentage? 500 shekel. But now, sweet cinnamon is only half. Only 250. But the one that is bitter is double the one that is sweet. Okay, next one. Which is 250 shekels. Uh -huh. And then 250 shekels of sweet smelling cane. And of those sweet smelling cane is how many? Cane. Only 250. And that's why you ask yourself, why am I going through what I'm going through? The anointing that is, because originally, bitterness is a higher percent than sweetness. You didn't catch it. You didn't catch it. Percentage of what is bitter is a higher than the percent of what swells, smells sweet and what is sweet. So sweetness is only half of what is bitter. And that's why when anointing comes upon you, you realize there's a lot of going throughs. The word get semane means a place of trials, place of battles, and also means oil pressed. 
Jesus had to pass by Gethsemane so that oil can be pressed on him. So, that so when he passes through the travails and the trials, he can conquer. When anointing comes, there is sweetness that comes along, but there is high percentage of bitterness that comes along. It's the bad news, but I have to say it. It's not, 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 it's not eating on the silver platter. And I'm anointed. Today we are in, is an anointing service in our church. But sometimes what we go through is that which is going to release anointing in the inside. I fully want to say. So when anointing was okay now, 500 shekels of acacia, acacia is also very bitter. Do you know acacia? Follow me here, follow me here. Touch your neighbor, ask them, are you here? Do you know how bitter acacia can be? Now, sweet cinnamon is only 250. My which is bitter, 500. Acacia which is bitter, 500. According to the shekel of the sanctuary and him, and he in olive oil, make anointing oil. So things that were bitter, they were putting double. Things that were sweet, they were putting half. So if my is 500, and acacia is 500, that is 1,000. Are we together? And now sweet cinnamon is only 250. The other one, 250. 500 again is 1,000. If you mix what is bitter in terms of that ratio, which one will be higher? And that's why you see lives of believers and born again children of God. And that's why you see somebody who is just a Catholic member. They don't know about Holy Spirit. They don't know about battles. They don't know about warfare. They don't know. You feel like they are doing well. They are not doing well at all. I can't fight you when you're on my, on my side. Can you? I don't fight who is on my side. But them that are not on my side now can bring every battle to their door. You are struggling financially. You are struggling maritally. You are struggling in your health. You are struggling. Bitterness is even more than sweetness. Those who are going to be anointed, anointed as pastors, the Lord will be a strength. I, usually, I tell you every day, the Lord is my strength. Short fire. Even members, because oil is on your head. Touch not my anointed. You are one of them. So this one applies to you. And that's why every time you are anointed, you see battles. Your children now begin to misbehave. Battles in your house, in your finances. But if you can stand it, the better part of you is being bathed out. Are you following what I'm saying here? Chapter 8, verse 7 of Genesis. Before we pray. I don't have a, God, a long sermon because we have a number of issues to address. 8 verse 7 of, of Genesis. New King James Version. It says, Then he sent out a raven. Which, then he sent out a raven. Which kept going to and fro until the waters had dried up from the earth. Okay. Uh -huh. He also sent out from himself a dove. You know the story of Noah and the waters and God is destroying the earth? You know the story? You know the story? When the people are you know, against the Lord, the Lord got tired. He wanted to destroy everything on the face of the earth. And the Lord allowed water to come and Noah was to make an ark. You know the story? And then the ark was to carry people and some animals and some things in the inside. And what was inside only was to survive. Including animals, including human beings, including trees, the living animals. Those that are seen and those that cannot be seen. Even insects. The water was to destroy. Even the animals that used to live in water. That water was even destroying them. Are we together here? Now follow me here. So Noah then after the rains. Now Noah sends a raven to go and check. If the earth is now coming down. And the Bible says a raven never came back. Take it again verse 7 now. Now I brought you to speed. Then he sent out a raven. Uh -huh. Which kept going to and fro. And kept going to and fro meaning never came back. Until the waters had dried up from the earth. So the raven never came back. Because raven would hear some smell of some dead animals. And you say, no, I will not go back. My miracle is about to, about to happen. These are dimensions I don't live. I will stay around. Are you following? So raven never went back. And then now, then he sent out. He sent, then he also sent out from himself a, a dove. dove. To see if the waters had receded from the face of the ground. And next verse. But the dove found no resting place for the sole of her foot. Uh -huh. 
And she returned into the ark to him. Uh -huh. For the waters were on the face of the whole earth. Mm -hmm. So he put out his hand, took her, and drew her into the ark to himself. So the dove also went, tried, it came back. It did not work. Next verse. And he waited yet another seven days. After seven days he waited. And again he sent the dove out from the ark. Uh -huh. Then the dove came to him in the evening. And behold, a flesh a freshly plucked olive leaf. Now if the Bible you are using is yours, underline the word freshly. A freshly plucked olive leaf was in her mouth. And no one knew that the waters had receded from the earth. A freshly, where do you get a fresh leaf of an olive oil, after, uh, an olive tree after that destruction? I thought everything was destroyed. Because if, if the Bible we are reading is not lying. If the Bible we are reading is not what? No, 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 no. I don't like the way you are talking. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? If the Bible is saying the truth, everything was destroyed. And when the Bible says everything, sir, it means but a dove could bring a fresh leaf of an olive tree. And the oil is an extract of an olive tree. That's why olive oil, you see them writing and there must be a symbol. Of an olive tree. That's significance. What does it mean? A flood, I made you aware, is a symbol of battles. Follow me here now. Close your Bible. A dove is this, I mean, a, a flood is a symbol of what? Battles. The Bible say, and the enemy shall come against you like a flood. So that one qualify a flood to signify what? battles, war, challenge. So the flood was on the face of the earth for weeks. But an olive tree couldn't be affected. What does that mean? There can be battles in your life, but your anointing cannot be affected. Are you following what I'm saying here? There can be going through in your life, in your family, but the anointing upon your life cannot be shaken. The devil shall rise against you like a flood, but the rover shall raise standards against him. What does that mean? The battles in your life cannot conquer your anointing. That's why they can take your job, but you remain anointed. They can take your family, you can remain anointed. Your mother can die, you remain anointed. Your husband can die, you remain anointed. Everything about you can be taken, but the anointing will survive the battles. has been tested and proved. And that's why the anointing you are receiving today will make you walk through seasons. In season, out of seasons. Some of us are walking oracles. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? So the anointing when it's upon you, anything can happen. You, they can take your car, they can take your house, they can take your job, they can take your everything that belongs, they can take like they did to Job. But what survived when the storm came upon Job was the anointing. And the anointing that survived brought back in double dimension. I feel like prophesying. Anything that was taken upon your head by the anointing you are receiving tonight, may that anointing restore it double. I say, may the anointing restore it double. May the anointing restore it double. Stand up on your feet. So storms signify battles. But the olive tree survived the storms. Came back very fresh. And that's why when anointing is upon your head, sickness can come upon you. There was a day a woman called me. I was very sick. And the woman learned pastor is sick. And she called me. She said, Prof, I learned that you are sick. I say, bless you, man. He said, I know you are not feeling well. I say, it's okay. The Lord is my strength. He said, but I'm, I'm also sick. And I want you to pray for me. Uh -uh. I thought I'm sick. You have heard I'm sick. She's saying, but I want you to do what? Because she knows, though I am sick in my flesh, but my anointing can still heal her. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? 
Though I may not have money in my pocket, but my anointing can give you money. I may not have the V8, the Range Rover, yes. but my anointing can give it to you. Oh, can I prophesy? Jehovah <laughs> is on your side. Jehovah is on your side. The miracle is yours. The breakthrough is yours. The testimony is yours. Shut fire. First Samuel, I want to give you something. Chapter 10, verse 1. First Samuel, stand up if you're sitting, please. First Samuel, chapter 10, verse 1. Then Samuel took a flask of oil. Samuel took a flask of oil. And poured it on his head. And poured it on in the head and of him. Saul. Follow me here. I, I expected you to look at the screen or look at me. Are you here? Now, you know the story of Saul and the donkey. And they were going to look for the donkey. Their father's donkey was missing and those stories. You know the thing? And the Bible says, after they had looked for so many times, I mean, I mean places and different places, they couldn't find it. And it talk in their spirit by the spirit of God that we may be busy looking for a donkey and our father has stopped looking for what? He's busy looking for us. So let's go back to him. Then the messenger, the man that was helping him told him, sir, before we go back, I know there is a seer. Are you following? That's, that's now chapter 9. The Bible says, I know a seer in this area who can tell us the mind of God concerning what you're looking for. Yes. Oh, I, I thank God this ministry there is a seer. Yes. Mm -hmm. I thank God there is a seer. Yes. The Bible says, as it were in those days, the prophets were called seers. Yeah. Are you following what I'm saying? Yeah. So then, he then came Samuel, to Samuel. Let's take it from there. Then Samuel took a flask of oil and poured it on his head. And he took a flask of oil and poured it on Saul. And kissed him and said. And kissed him and said. It is not because the Lord has anointed you commander over his inheritance. Is this not because... That's how it's supposed to be. Is this not I'm anointing you because the Lord take us back please. Let me explain some scriptures here. Is this not because the Lord has anointed you? Who is carrying oil in his hand? Uh -uh, read with me the Bible. Who is carrying the anointing oil in his hand? Samuel. But who is Samuel saying is anointing soul? Which Bible are you reading? God. God. Though I'm the one pouring oil but the Lord himself is the one anointing you. Why are you not getting simple revelation? Like I'll anoint you today. Not prophet Robert. Jehovah. With my hands will anoint you. And when the Lord anoints you through my hand. Everything I said become valid over yes. your head. Is it not the Lord busy anointing you so? Commander over his inheritance. Next verse. When you have departed from me today. Now because of the anointing you are receiving today. After departing from this service. You will find two men by Rachel's tomb. In the territory of Benjamin at Zel Zezer. There are six things I want to give you right now. Number one. You remember this service. I want to give you six things. Write them down. There are plenty seats towards the end. Let them just enter. Sit down for a minute. Write them down very fast. The Lord just brought it in my spirit through the scripture. Why am I feeling the anointing so heavy on my head? Something will happen in this service. If anybody is outside now, I shall tell them to come in. Time is bad. I feel like prophesying now. Are we there now? The Bible said, number one thing that God will give you after this service is good news. Right? Good news. What? Good news. Now let's read to as we go. Number one, the Lord will give you what? Shout good news. Shout good news. good news. Now when you have departed from me today, read it now. When you have departed from me today, look at your screens. You will find two men by Rachel's tomb in uh -huh. the territory of Benjamin. Okay. At Zelza. Uh -huh. And they will say to you, they will say to you, the donkeys which you went to look for. The miracle that you've been looking for before this service. Can I prophesy? The miracle you have been looking for when Can I talk to somebody here? Yes. Some of us you have been watching and following great men. Yes. And the reason is that I want to tap an anointing. Oh, no. There's a miracle that must happen in my life. Yes. The devil has mocked me is enough. Yes. 
and I will try everything within my powers that I may bring my miracle out and I come to announce today that the miracle you have been looking for after this service you shall receive a good news sit down he said you will two men by the tomb of Rachel before we go further can I show you the Bible the Bible says when Rachel was giving birth after Rachel gave birth Rachel died immediately are we together here are we together here and it's believed that when you come by that place of the tomb of Rachel it is bad news that you shall carry along it has been believed that anybody that comes from the house of Benjamin yes. that passes to the tomb of Rachel yes. should carry back bad news yes. that that it that says the Lord when the prophet opened his mouth to speak he said I know in the tomb of Rachel people carry back bad news but as for you because of the oil because of the oil because of the anointing when you come to that place of can I prophesy can I prophesy when you come to a place of disgrace you shall carry grace back home when you come to a place of shame you shall carry praise back home when you come to a place of this you shall carry your testimony back shut fire he said when you come to the tomb of Rachel in the territory of Benjamin at Caesar where we know people carry bad news as for you there they will say to you this is the good news that donkey you have been looking for has been found that job you have been looking for has been found the miracle you have been looking for has been found the marriage you have been looking for has been found the business you have been trying to start has been found the anointing you have been looking for has been found they shall say to you you are a woman of favor you are a man of favor show me your god show me your ways show me your style show me your formula because i see the lord is on your side can i prophesy may good news come your way may good news come your way before the month of april come to an end may good news come your way amen say that again that the donkey you have been looking for they have been found and now your father has ceased caring about the donkeys and is worrying about you what they said in their heart was confirmed when you meet a prophet when they were talking at themselves prophet was not there that maybe our father has stopped looking for a donkey he's not looking for us now when they meet the prophet the exact words they spoke on their way yes. the prophet is confirming exactly by words yes. I, I receive and he's worrying about you. What shall I do about my son? Next verse. Something is happening here. Then you shall go on forward from there and come to the... So number one is good news. Number one you shall receive from here is what? Good news. Number two, restoration. Number two you shall receive what? Write it down. I will feel something here. Uh-huh. Then you shall go on forward. From there and come to the terabit tree of uh, Teba. Uh -huh. There are three men going up to God at Bethel will meet you. Men going to Bethel will meet you. One carrying three young goats. How many three? How many men? Three. three. They will meet you, okay? One is carrying three young goats. Uh -huh. Another carrying three loaves of bread. Uh -huh. And another carrying a skin of wine. Okay, let me hold it there. Let me have three people. Try and get three things in your hands. Get three things, get three things, get three things, get three things. It may be a phone, a Bible, and a notebook, or a pen, a Bible, and a notebook. Come with the three men. Stand here very quickly. Let me preach with an example. Stand here, stand here, stand here. How many men are these? Three. You are carrying three, you are carrying three. You, you should carry one. So take the two. Okay. Then you shall go down forward from there and come to the terebin tree of Tabor. There are three men going up to God at Bethel will meet you. One carrying three young goats. Uh -huh. Another carrying three loaves of bread. Uh -huh. And another carrying a skin of wine. One carrying a skin of what? Wine. Of wine. Now already you have been anointed. Are you following what I'm saying here? And this is what is happening. Next verse. 
And they will greet you and give you two loaves of bread. Now wait. Give me two. He has given me two. He has remained with one. Is that correct? Uh -huh. Give me two, sir. He has also given me two. Which you shall receive from their hands. And if each is giving me two and he's only having one, it means he will give all that he has. Is that correct? Because if you only have one, you cannot give more than what you don't have. Are we together? Okay. So, he's remaining with one. He's remaining with one. He's remaining with zero. How many do I have? Five. But I came empty handed. Are you catching what I'm saying here? And they will greet you and give to you two loaves of bread which shall receive from their hands. What anointing will do? Anointing will give you favor. So that people just like giving you. Until when they remain without, they just want to give you. Next verse. After that, you shall come to the hills so wait, of God. If I was having zero, and by encountering the three of them, now I have three, I have five. Am I not blessed? If I was lacking, do I say lack? So what anointing will do for you is that anointing after this service will give abundance into your life. Thank you, consider. Abundance. People will give you without reasoning. How can I give you two? I only have three. I'm remaining with one. It means I can't reason. I only had one. I'm giving you only one I had. It means I cannot do what? When oil is on your head, people bless you without reasoning. People just promote you without reasoning. People talk well about you without reasoning. Imagine if somebody here. That's what be your portion. Next verse. After that, you shall come to the hill of God where, uh -huh. the, where the Philistines garrison is. Uh -huh. And it will happen when you have come there to the city uh -huh. that you will meet a group of prophets coming down from the high places uh -huh. with a string instrument. A hold, it, hold, it, hold it fast. The anointing is taking him to the garrison. Did I see the word garrison? Yes. Did you see the word garrison? Yes. Not into the city. A garrison is the most strongest, one of the most strongest places of a country. That an Al-Shabaab man cannot just walk in into the garrison, however small or big. Are you following what I'm saying here? And Saul is not a, a, a Philistine. Saul is an enemy to Philistines. Are you following what I'm saying? But by the anointing, the Bible is telling us that the Lord will empower him to walk through the garrison. I don't know who is catching this. Not into the camp of your enemies. Right into their strongholds. And walk without them seeing you. And passing without them noticing. Going in and coming out. Can I prophesy? Though you walk in the valley of the shadow of death. The anointing shall preserve you. You will go in there and come out. Whether they are witches or wizards. The Philistines garrison is. The mountain of the Lord, where garrison, the, the Philistines, they have put their garrison there as a stronghold. But because oil is over your head, you will enter. Yes. You will come out. Yes. Do you see what anointing can do? And that's why you can enter a house of a witch. Yes. Are you following? It's true. And they can kill you, but they cannot kill you. Yes. Do you go in and come out and yes. set and, and touched? Because they have been told, don't dare. They have been told not yeah. to dare. Don't dare. After this service, there is no place you cannot enter. Yes. I don't like the way you are responding here. I said there is no place you cannot enter. Amen. If anointing can take him to the garrison, not into the country of the Philistines, in the garrison. No, that is a dead sentence. Am I saying the truth? Yes. And that's why after this service, we are going to take batteries to their doorsteps. Yes. That's what God was telling him. Now with this anointing, now you can take it to them. Those that you've been running away from. Now after this, now you can go to them. Yes. Because an instruction has been given in verse 14 of Psalm 105. That don't dare. So they will see you coming. They want to kill you, but they have nothing to do. They have been warned. If you dare, even on here, if you like that. Shout, I receive it. I receive. 
when you have come there to the, to the city, city uh -huh. that you will meet a group of prophets now you will meet a group of prophets coming down from the high number four number five is it number four number five number four. whichever it is uh -huh. then the spirit of, when you meet sons of, of the prophet prophesying no take us back please verse five please Uh -huh. You'll meet a group of prophets coming down from the high place uh -huh. with stringed instruments, uh -huh. a tambourine, a flute, a harp before them, and they will be prophesying. Now, these people, you are going to meet them, they will be prophesying. But now remember, you are not actually anointed in this service to become a prophet. Are you following what I say? You are anointed for different reasons. Like I said, there are people here that they are receiving anointing for business. By the way, somebody can be anointed for business. Yes. Can I shock you? The Bible says that Samson, the son of Manoah, was anointed to do what? To fight. That's the reason he was anointed. Not to preach, not to prophesy. To do what? To fight. So if he can be anointed to fight, you can be anointed to preach. You can be anointed to do business. You can be anointed for good marriage. You can be anointed to prosper in, in anything that you touch. Yes. The people can just be anointed when they sing like this. Eh? Even you, they, they don't have a good voice. But the way they sing, there's this thing that you feel. The anointing. Somebody saw the anointing. Yes. No, it's our flow today. Saw the anointing. the anointing. You will meet them prophesying. Okay, verse 6. What will happen? Then the spirit of the Lord will come upon you. Because now you're already anointed, the spirit now can come upon you. And you will prophesy with them. And you will prophesy with them. And be turned into another man. And be turned into another man. Total transformation. Number five. When anointing comes into your life, it will transform you totally, completely, wholesomely. Total transformation. You will be turned into another man. We know your soul. Anointed to be a king. But because of that anointing, there is something that will happen that will totally transform you. That transformation is coming your direction. I say it will come your direction now. I spoke about favor. When people are giving you more than they have. Do you remember? Number six, write it down. And number seven, protection. You can pass in the garrison and nothing happens to you. Did you see that? And the last one, be even the prophetic grace. You'll be turned into another person. Now verse seven now. The last one is the prophetic grace. You begin to prophesy among them. If from where you are born, nobody has ever prophesied Pim. Hello, look at me here. Look at me here. Look at me here. Where you are, you are born, even <laughs> nobody has prophesied even small like this. But when you encounter the prophetic grace, I follow what I'm saying here. You know what the Bible is saying? When you encounter the prophetic grace, you can receive impartation of the same grace. And let it be. When those signs take us back fast, take us back fast, take us back fast. Let's finish with verse 6. Then the Spirit of God will come upon you and turn you into another man. And you will prophesy with them. Since your mother born you. Even you yourself, you know, you think you close your eyes tight. If you open like this, you see stars. Sapphire. You know, you, you guys are, I will prophesy today. If you open your eyes, you see darkness. After this encounter, you will not see stars. You begin to see dimensions. And you begin to prophesy. Shut and receive it. Now verse 7 says then. And, and let, let it be. Uh -huh. When these signs come to you. When these miracles happen. That you do as the occasion demands. If it is prophetic, prophesy. God is with you. Don't hold yourself. If somebody wants to bless you and you hold yourself. No, don't hold yourself. You are giving me everything. You are remaining without. 
Uh, don't hold yourself. Ah, this side, this side is not in church. Let me talk. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? The Bible says, do as the occasion does what? Say, Master, I just feel that in this your wedding that is coming, I should give you one million. And then you're saying, no, you give me one million. What are you remaining with? No, 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 there's nothing like what you're remaining with. Do as the occasion does what? In verse 8, the Bible says, and people ask. Give me there. I want us to pray now. I wanted us to pray. The Lord said I should drop this. And you shall go down before me in Gilgal. And surely I will come down to you to offer a burnt offering and make sacrifice of peace offering. Seven days you shall wait till I come and I show you what you should do. After the anointing comes upon you, this one don't write it down. There's an instruction God will give you. Wait for that instruction. And if you, are give, you, you receive the instruction, do it to the letter. And you shall go down from there. And I will come down to you when you are offering sacrifice of peace. Seven days you shall wait till I come to you. And I will show you what you should do. When anointing comes, anointing comes to you for you to do something with it. Some of us, God is going to anoint you to break yokes of your mother's house. There are some nonsense, useless things that have been happening there that need to be corrected. But nobody can stand in the gap like I was preaching it on Friday. But God has ordained you to stand in that gap. And you need anointing to break it. What your mother could not bring down, you need anointing to bring it down. What your father could not silence, you need anointing to silence it. What your grandfather did not make, you need anointing to make it. Yes. Am I talking to somebody here? Yes. Where they have never gone, you need anointing to go there. Shout, I receive that anointing. Rise up on your feet now. Close your Bible.